my name is Sarah Borsali and I'm the Web Analytics and Text Mining Specialist for the Center of Customer Insights and Digital Marketing. This is an introduction to Google Analytics for generating customer insights for digital marketing. Upon the successful completion of this workshop, you should be able to explain why Google Analytics is important for your website, connect your website to Google Analytics, navigate administrative settings of Google Analytics, understand the sidebar menu, define the most common metrics or KPIs and generate insights from metrics, and lastly, make recommendations to improve KPIs. So let's get started. So what is Google Analytics used for? Google Analytics is a good way to get to know your customers and users. You can get a deeper understanding of your customers using these analytics. Google Analytics gives you the free tools you need to analyze data for your business in one place. With Google Analytics, you can build a complete picture connect your insights to results, get insights only Google can give, and make your data work for you. So why is Google Analytics important? As I mentioned in the previous slide, there are many advantages of using Google Analytics. There are more advantages of analyzing your website data through Google Analytics, such as generating insights, showing strengths and weaknesses, helping determine what can be improved, highlight where to put better search engine optimization, improve content, and lead the way to better decision-making. This graphic shows the different types of devices that are accessing a website or app by session. As we can see, 74% of the users are using a computer, while 23% and 1.5% are using a mobile device or tablet. This information is important because this gives us an insight into what can be improved. We can see what we should focus the majority of our efforts on the desktop website, since the majority of the users view on the desktop website. If we notice that the mobile percentage was increasing over time, we would use this insight to put more manpower into optimizing and bettering the mobile site to give users a better user experience, as well as bringing in more users. This next picture shows where a website or app is being viewed based on country by sessions. Similar to the other picture, this graphic shows us something about the majority of our users. With this insight, we know where we should focus our marketing campaigns or where we should better our marketing campaigns. So now let's add an account to Google Analytics. If you'd like to follow along without having your own website, you can use the Google Merchandise Store demo account, which is linked down below. The Google Merchandise Store is Google's online store where you can buy branded merchandise such as shirts, mugs, etc. This is e-commerce data. The link contains instructions on how to access the demo account, or you can Google Google Merch Store demo account, click on the first search result and follow the instructions, which are the same as what's on the, shown on the screen. I will be using Google Merchandise Store data for the remainder of this presentation. Anything that is not Google Merch Store, I will specify. So this is the administrative admin page. This is uh, more of a uh, settings page. So there are three columns, account, property, and view. First, you'll need to go to the account column, which is the first one on the left, to set up your account. I will go over the two columns, the other two columns later. To begin using Google Analytics, click on the gear icon in the bottom left corner and click on create account in the first column, um, the account column. <clears throat> Next, type in your account name, which will be the name of your website. For purposes of adding an account, I will be using the Center for Customer Insights and Digital Marketing as an example, rather than the Google Merch Store for this, slide, for this slide and the next slide. Next, select where you would like to measure. We selected web since we only have a website and we don't have an app. If you had a, web, or an, a website and an application, you would select the third one, or if you only had an application, you would select the middle one. Next, type in your website's name and your website URL. Select your industry and time zone. We chose jobs in education and Pacific LA time since we were a university in California. And when you're done filling out this information, click create. Now that we've added a website to our, now that we've added an account in the website, let's finish the final step by adding our website by linking Google Analytics to the website. <clears throat> Here is the admin page that I showed earlier. Now we're gonna be going over the middle column, which is the properties column. A property is a website, mobile application, or blog that is associated with a unique tracking ID. A Google Analytics account can contain one or more properties. In our case, since we only have a desktop website, we should only have one property for the center website. In the future, if we make a mobile website or application, those would be added as separate properties. 
This is also where to find the tracking information and settings about the property. Once you create your website within Google Analytics, you need to actually link your website to Google Analytics. This is done in the middle column of the admin page in the properties column, which I just went over using the unique tracking code that Google provides you. Keep in mind that Google does not have your website's past data. Any data you see on the dashboard is starting from when you connected your website to Google Analytics. Here I have an example of the Google Merchandise Store tracking code and tracking ID. When you click on the tracking code link, Google provides you with an HTML code, also known as the site tag, and a tracking ID, which both do the same job. The easiest way to use the HTML tracking code properly is to put it in a code that is on every single page of your website, such as a header code. The tracking ID can be used for certain content management sites such as Blogger, Weebly, Wix, and most other web hosting services. For these kinds of websites, there should be a text box in the settings where you put this code in. And there you go, your connection is complete. Don't forget to click send test traffic to ensure that the connection has been successfully made. Google will use a bot to view your website and if it connected successfully, you should have at least one view. <clears throat> now let's go over what you should set up before you start your analysis. So views are the next step under properties, which is the last column on the right. To summarize views, say you want a specific filter for website data in America and another filter for website data in India. This is where you would create and set filters rather than having a dashboard with 100% of your data and filter the whole dashboard every time. Keep in mind that you should always have a view that has 100% of your website's data, such as a master view or your raw data. Once you delete this, you might not be able to get it back. Google often changes the amount of time something stays in the trash once it's deleted, so it's better to just not risk it and always keep an unfiltered data view. <clears throat> you can copy the master view or raw data as many times as you'd like and place it filters in the copies. Also in the view columns under user management, you can add and remove users from accessing the dashboard as well as edit their permissions, similar to Google Drive, where you can determine who can edit, view, et cetera. Here's a visualization of an organization, account, property, and view hierarchy. The organization is the Google account as a whole, which in this case is company A. Account A is, is the account you made on Google Analytics using your Google account or Gmail, which is still company A. If you have two companies within an organization, similar to how Old Navy and Gap are under the same parent company, but an analyst would want two separate accounts for each store under the one organization. The property would be either web, app, or web and app. In this example, there is still company A, company A web and company A app. The views are last in the hierarchy. These views can be company A India and company A America for each property. So now that we went over the settings, now let's go to the actual Google Analytics website to go over the sidebar menu and the dashboards within each tab. So I already have Google Analytics uh, typed in in Google. I'm just gonna click on the link. So the first tab on the sidebar menu is home, which I'm already clicked on. So home is the overall dashboard of many metrics. The visuals on this page are created by Google. So these are by default created by Google. So the homepage is mostly just a compilation of reports that Google put together. Um, also at the top of this site, there is a search bar. Here you can ask questions to Google Analytics and it might be able to generate a report to answer your question. So here it says, try searching users today. So let's type in users today. And here it says an insight users today. So we can click on this. And then here we have a report. So let's click on this report. And as you can see, it brought us the audience overview. And now we can see the users today. We have 1,824 users. So next is customization. So customization is where you create a dashboard, custom reports, save reports, or create custom alerts. This is similar to the home tab, but it's more customizable. So let's go over some custom dashboards. So I'm already clicked on custom dashboards. This is similar to the home page, but as I said, more customizable. You can create and save um, reports, which you'd like to compile here. Uh, it's loading. So as you can see, there's like new users, users, session, session by browser. So these are all just mini reports compiled into one dashboard. Um, and of course you can edit the 
time period. You can also just add whatever segments or reports you want. So if I click on this one right here, it'll take me to a separate tab. And then here, just it's a whole one report that was compiled into one dashboard. So now let's go back to customization and go to custom reports. So similar to custom dashboards, you can customize reports. Reports are just like dashboards, but rather than having multiple on one page, there's only one making it more detailed. The dashboard is a compilation of reports. Reports are just on their own. So here is just all users. I have city users, purchase completed. And as you can see, there's only one report here rather than having tiles of many different reports. So the next tab is real time. Let's go on real time overview. So real time is a live view of what's going on on the website, monitoring the numbers as they happen. Live metrics include how many people are on a certain page right now or what countries they're mostly active in. Let's go over a couple tabs within the real time tab. So let's start with location data. So as you can see, this shows the number of active users that are in currently in these highlighted locations. This information is great insight because it shows us more than just a snapshot of location data. It is current information. So as you can see here, most people are in the US. There's 24 people active right now. And actually 27, there's 27 right there. And then India has the second largest population on the website at this exact second with five users. And the rest are a little bit um, highlighted, but not as much as the others. So now next let's go over content. So this shows what site pages are currently being viewed in the percentage of viewers per site page. This is important for the same reason as the previous slide. So here we can see uh, the basket page has four active users right now. And see the home page has two um, and it changes. So these aren't set forever. As you can see, as time goes on, these go up and down. Okay, so next let's go over the next tab, which is audience. So audience is insights of characteristics of users such as gender, age, geography, device, or operating system. I would like to go over three audience tabs. So first let's go over demographics and uh, let's go age, or just overview. So this shows the breakdown of um, age and gender. So this dashboard shows us that there's an age bucket, which right here is 25 to 34, which is greater than the rest. And then a gender um, slice of this uh, pie chart that most of the users on the website in this time period, which is November 27th to December 3rd is male. So this can be important information for determining which products to deploy, how to market, et cetera. Next, let's go over location data. So that's gonna be under geography and location. So similar to what I just showed in real time, this is just a past data. So this is the breakdown of the location of a world map. As you can see by the highlighting, some of the countries are darker than others, meaning that there are more users from those locations than other locations with little to no highlighting. So similar to the previous slide, this information can guide our decision making such as putting our energy into other countries rather than focusing on the US only since the country is already doing pretty well. So here we see 8,043 users from the US, maybe we might, not, might wanna increase our users from Canada. So take some of the marketing manpower from US and implement it, implement it into the Canada marketing. So lastly, let's go over mobile devices. That's gonna go in mobile and devices. So like the previous example, this information can let us know what devices people are using. If we see that the majority of users are on iPad or iPhone, we might want to um, make our user interface for iOS perfect to ensure that these users continue visiting our website. And conversely, if we see that the operating system for other devices are lacking, such as the Pixel operating system or maybe an Android operating system, it's going to be an indication that the site is not optimized that well for that device or operating system. So I might want to work on that. Next under um, audience, we have acquisition. So acquisition is how to gain more traffic and visitors and how users came to the site. An important definition for the section is events. Events are user interactions with content that can be measured independently from a web page or a screen loan, such as downloading a newsletter or clicking on an ad link. So for example, this can be useful to see if a campaign ad is working or not by seeing if people are clicking on a link to a certain page. So let's go over some tabs within acquisition. Let's go to the traffic 
and source medium. So this shows us where viewers are coming from. Uh, for example, if it's a Google search or if they click on an ad. So we wanna know where users are coming from and how they're coming to our sites, such as social media links, advertisements, or organically Googling the site. Uh, this information is really important in advertising campaigns, just, just determining um, or in a way to get users onto the site more. So let's go over landing pages. So it's gonna be under Search Console and Landing Pages. So a landing page is the first page someone enters on when entering the site. So for example, if we see that many people are entering on the apparel site, which they are, we might wanna add a pop-up or ask for their email on that specific page since the majority of people are entering this website on this specific page. And conversely, if we see that nobody's entering on certain pages, we might wanna fix that problem so we can get more um, entrances. So here we see that the notebooks aren't getting as much attention as the apparel. So we can probably make some advertising links on our social media to increase this, maybe bump it up a couple spaces so people are entering on this site right here. And next is behavior. So behavior is how users are interacting with the website. Behavior can be where users exit the site, their path from page to page, etc. Let's go over this behavior flow chart right here. So this looks a little bit confusing. Uh, let me zoom out a little. Okay. So um, as you can see, this is where users start. They start in home, the YouTube, apparel, sign in, and there's like 7,000 more other pages, but these are just the more most important ones. So here's our starting page right here. So as you can see, um, this is the path of what people do on the website. So they go from home, they go to um, say YouTube or Google, and then this red bar is where people exit. And then you can see there, they go to YouTube, Google, Android, they keep going. You can see there just the whole path. So this information can be important because it lets you visualize your customer's path through a website, putting you in their shoes, which is great decision making, especially for web development. So lastly on the bar, actually let me zoom back in, is conversions. Let's click on uh, goals, funnel visualization. So conversions show how many conversion events were driven by each aspect of your marketing such as a campaign, ad network, or a creative outlet. So conversions are also completed activities that are important to a business typically in making sales. So this funnel right here um, shows a number of users entering, so it's a large number, 3,256, um, entering a shopping cart. Um, this funnel gets smaller and smaller as users exit the page. So here we can see 19%, 59% go down, and at the end, only 37%, which is 1% of the original number. So each time a user performs a conversion, such as going from the shopping cart, clicking to proceed payment, going to billing and shipping, and so on until they actually purchase something, the funnel keeps getting smaller, which is hence why it's called a funnel. Um, and also in this uh, graphic, we can see where people are entering from and where they're exiting from. Uh, since it's a funnel, the next steps after the first one don't have any entrances because they're coming down from the first one. But from here, we can see People enter the shopping cart from the apparel page, the home page, mostly just the apparel page. And then some of them are exiting completely off the website. Some of them are going back to the basket, the search bar, the store, signing in. Um, yeah, so there's pretty there's good information here. So if you've ever shopped on a website, you've been prompted to input your email and receive emails to let you know that you still have items waiting in your shopping cart. These sites do this in order to reduce the slimming of the funnel. This can be done with any kind of conversion, not just e-commerce. So uh, that's what this conversion allows websites and analysts to know that they need to target people who have stuff in their shopping cart yet they don't go to billing and shipping. So if you were here, the, so 638 people, they went to the next step, but for the other couple thousand that didn't, they would get an email saying that they still have stuff in their cart. Here, the rest of the people that are not the 377, they would get an email saying that they haven't checked out yet and so on. That's what this uh, funnel is important for. So I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so now let's get into some important definitions. So bounce rate is the percentage of visitors to a particular website who navigate away from a site after viewing only one page. Sessions are a group of user interactions within your website that take place within a given time frame, typically 30 minutes. So such as 
a user entering and going from the home page to the team page to the contact us page in a 30 minute span. That is one session. So users, which is the first column, are unique visitors, which means that repeat views by the same person in the same time period aren't counted. Sessions, which is the third column in that screenshot, are a time period when a person visits a site. So for example, if I enter a site at 1 p.m., that is one session. But if I leave and come back at 5 p.m., that's another session. But I'm still one user for that day. So the session will be higher than the users since I can have multiple sessions, but I can only be one user. So bounce rate, which is the last column, shows us that the age group 25 to 34, 45% of them left on that page. This information is important because it could be an indication that users don't like the content on the site or they could be confused by the layout since almost half of them exit there. So next is source medium. This is the origin of a website traffic such as Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Channels are the category of traffic source as defined by Google such as organic search, direct, referral, social, paid search, etc. The difference is between source medium and channel is that source medium is more of just a detailed channel but they're pretty similar. As you can see in the screenshots, the channel, the left image, has only one word explaining the source but the source medium, which is the right picture, shows a website or a URL. So the last part of Google Analytics I would like to uh, get into is how to analyze your data using four important tools to know for dashboard customization. Again, I'd like to reiterate that this is Google Merch Store data that is being collected for Google's purposes, but they allow everyone to use it for practice on Google Analytics. So the date is in the top right corner. You can either type in the date, use the calendar to the left, or use the ranges such as the last seven days or last month. Sometimes the date refreshes to the current date or the past week or so. So always ensure that you're always looking at the right date when you're looking at reports. So next is segments. So a segment is a subset of data. By default, you're looking at all users for all the analysis, but you might want to add a segment like users that need to purchase or mobile only users. When you add another metric, it'll add another line to the graph or more data to the charts and comparison view. Here you can see that the blue line is all users and that the orange line is the number of users that made a purchase, which is the segment that we added. You can hover over to see specific values. So on Sunday, March 22nd, 2020, there were 979 users, but only three of them made a purchase. This insight can help you discover if there's an issue with users purchasing, such as if your item is priced too high, then there are issues with payment processing, etc. Next is metrics. Metrics is similar to segments, but rather than only user data, you can compare user data to say average session duration or any other user activity. So just like segments, the lines are in different colors on the same graph to show the direct comparison between the two metrics. So I use the same date range and the same users for this one as well, except I switched the users that made a purchase with average session duration. So of those 979 users, uh, the average session duration was two minutes and 57 seconds. And lastly is secondary dimensions. Secondary dimension feature allows you to define a primary dimension and then view that data by a secondary dimension within the same table for their filtering and breaking it down. In this example, we are viewing language as a primary dimension and mobile device as a secondary dimension. If we didn't have a secondary dimension, we would only see one language per row. But with the secondary dimension, instead of having US English once, we have US English for Apple iPhone, US English for Apple iPad, and so on. So the secondary dimension allows you to drill down from first dimension for a more specific analysis. So now let's go over our learning objectives that we went over at the beginning of the workshop. So we explain why Google Analytics is important for a website, connect our website to Google Analytics, navigate administrative settings of Google Analytics, understand the sidebar menu of Google Analytics, define the most common metrics or KPIs and generate insights from those metrics, and make recommendations to improve key performance indicators. So thank you for learning Google Analytics with me. Feel free to add the Center uh, for Customer Insights and Digital Marketing on LinkedIn, Twitter, and connect with us through email. Also feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn.